started off on um, August 18, 2010, and uh, this was, um, I woke up, it was like any other normal day. Um, I woke up, I had some breakfast, had some cereal, went, I hopped in the shower, and this was during the summer, so, of 2010, this was uh, the summer after I graduated high school, so all my buddies and stuff were uh, about to leave to college, uh, to the East Coast, one was going to Duke, the other one was going to NYU, so um, we all decided we're going to hang out and... Uh, we needed something to do. So I'm going to fast forward to around like 6.30. I meet up with them at a, in Amherst Heights at a top class pizza. And um, I, get a, I get like two slices of pizza. I, uh, I eat the pizza. You know, we're just talking. And then we're just trying to call to see if uh, anything is going on tonight. And um, basically, um, they call uh, one of our buddies, uh, Sharon. She uh, was having like a house party because her parents uh, left to Korea on vacation. And uh, for the weekend, and uh, basically we're like, okay, sweet, you know, we have something to do, you know, we can hang out and we can, you know, see each other again, like in winter break after we party. And um, basically, we were 19 at the time, so we had to call someone to get us alcohol after we left uh, Top Class Pizza. And uh, we called one of our buddies. He met us up at Albertsons, and uh, we got a handle with Captain Morgan and a 30 pack, and uh, we headed over to Sharon's house. Basically, her house was in uh, Fullerton. It was like near. Uh, Amherst Heights, so it wasn't too far, so I decided to drive with one of my other buddies, he decided to drive too. And uh, basically, uh, we get to the party, we start drinking, we dust the handle of Captain Morgan in about like 20 to 25, 30 minutes, and we decide, we're, I'm, at this point, we're feeling good, you know, I'm buzzing, we're just hanging out, and then we go outside after to play some beer pong. We play like three or four or five games of beer pong, and basically, after the, after the four, four or five games of beer pong, we're pretty buzzed, you know, we're feeling good, we're just partying, the music's cracking, and um, we go back inside, we take a couple more shots, and after those shots, uh, we decide to uh, play Ring of Fire, it's like a drinking game, and like we sit in a circle, and you put out a deck of cards, and you pick out a card, and there's certain rules, and while we're playing that, within like 30 minutes, we hear a uh, knocking on the door. And we we're like, oh, it could be one of our buddies, you know, coming in and bringing some more alcohol or something. So we opened the door, and guess who it was? It was the cops. <laughs> and they said that uh, that there was a, a noise disturbance call from the neighbors who were, like, living right next door. And they were saying that the music was too loud. They were saying that people were yelling everywhere outside while we were playing beer pong. So we're like, oh, okay, sorry, officer, we're going to keep the noise down. We're going to, you know, just keep it down. It's okay. And then they're like, okay, well, I hope to not come again. Basically, we go back inside, we finish our game of Ring of Fire, everything's all good. And then me and, me and four of my buddies, we decided, uh, we got pretty hungry, we had the beer munchies. So we decided to go to Mocha Salsa right here on the harbor. It's, uh, it's like the best for California burritos and like super fries. So we decided to go there. And while, we, while we're leaving the house, one, two of my buddies call or one of my buddies called Shotgun, and my other buddy calls Left Nut and Right Nut. So that makes me sit dick, and I didn't want to sit dick, so I was like, no, I'm not going to sit dick, I'm just going to drive, which is really stupid. And at this point, I'm pretty buzzed, you know, I'm feeling good, so I'm just like, whatever, I'm just going to drive. So one of my buddies comes with me, he sits Shotgun in my car, and we pull out of the neighborhood. My friend is in front of me, the other person who drove, and I was behind him. And basically... I was taking a left outside uh, of her neighborhood onto the street, onto Euclid, to go towards Harbor. And in my rearview mirror, I see sirens. And it's like, it's the police, basically. So my buddy says, you know, you're getting, uh, you're getting uh, followed by the police, and you pull over. And I pull over, and I'm just panicking at this point, because I'm buzzed, and, you know, like, I don't know what to do, basically. So I pull over, I lower my window, the cop walks to my window, and he says, License and registration and proof of insurance, please. And I said, Officer, what did, what did I do wrong? Uh, he's like, your back license plate light isn't illuminated. And I looked at his face and I recognized those the same cops that were at the party telling us to keep the noise down. And basically, at that time, I knew it was over. He asked me, did you have anything to drink? And I said, I had two beers, which was a lie, you know. And he was like, all right. He, he took me out of the car and he gave me a sobriety test. And I passed two of them. And he's like, I'm going to bring a unit over with a breathalyzer. So he brings a breathalyzer. The unit comes over with the breathalyzer. I keep blowing. I keep inhaling because I don't want to 
get caught, you know? So he's like, if you do that one more time, we're going to take you to the police station and they're going to take your blood. So I was like, no, okay, I'll, I'll blow in. And I blew, I blew in and he arrested me. And uh, he arrested me for my DUI. My car got towed. My buddy had to get picked up by one of my other friends who just was at Mocha Salsa. And they took me to the police station. They processed me and they put me in the cell. It was like, they put me in jail cell. It was like freezing in there because they wanted you to sober up basically. And then they, they released me the next morning. And um, this was the worst day of my life because I came home and my mom always tells me, don't ever drink and drive. It's the worst. You can hit someone, you know, and you don't, you don't even mean to and anything happened. And she was probably the most disappointed person because every time I leave home, she always says, don't drink and drive. You know, don't drink. You know, don't drive. And I was, and every single time I said, okay, okay, and I would lie to her. And this time I finally got caught. And then basically, the next day I was supposed to, my girlfriend was going to go to UCSD, and I was supposed to take her there and help her move in and stuff. But I couldn't do that because I didn't have my license anymore because I was 19 at the time and I had a one-year license suspension. So that was the worst day of my life in the case that I disappointed my parents. I couldn't help my girlfriend, and I got my license suspended for a year.